While superstitions have no effect on how the matches will pan out, some players out there tend to religiously follow a couple of pre-match rituals that give them the hope that they'll end up with the trophy. Now, we're still not sure if they think they'll win by angling their socks a certain way, or maybe it's more about comfort zones. But here are some weird things tennis players do before a match. Starting off with Rafael Nadal, being almost unbeaten on clay courts isn't the only thing Nadal's famous for. In his two decades of experience with tennis, the man has also managed to make quite a name for himself with his pre-match rituals. With some very specific activities, he tries to make the court his second home. Now, with so many weird things that he tends to do, obviously questions are bound to come up. So naturally, during interviews, he used to be hit with questions about why he'd do it. According to him, doing all of it was just one of his ways to concentrate and ground himself. He commented, each one has to find their way of concentrating. Out of all of his pre-match regimes, it's the positioning of the water bottles that has the audience confused the most. Before each match, he sets both of his water bottles on the ground in front and to the left of his chair. Then, for the duration of the game, he alternates between bottles, never drinking from the same one again. And that's not even the end of it. Before beginning a match, Rafa prefers not to wear a headband on his head. Also, there's his obsession with his socks. Right when the match is about to begin, he makes sure that both of his socks are at the height of around 15 centimeters from the ground. And he's also known to do kangaroo leaps in the locker room, compulsive toweling off in between points, and an equal amount of obsessive cleaning of the lines between points with a shoe sole, even when those lines are already squeaky clean. Next, Serena Williams. Serena's a practical woman, and all her pre-match rituals are great examples of her sensibility and practicality on the courts. As of 2022, the queen has managed to bag 23 grand slams, the second most by anyone ever. But how has she managed to pull it all off? Turns out, she always had a couple of tricks up her sleeve to make her truly at home in the matches. Why has she been so successful? Obviously, this requires a great deal of effort and persistence. But there's something else as well. The champion also has a routine before every match. Washing her hands. In an interview with Vogue magazine, she revealed to the world that it's very common for her to scrub her hands right before a match. According to her, what she needs to win is a really good grip. And that comes through this tiny little trick. Who would have thought something as simple as washing hands could be the trick to 23 grand slams? Anyway, now we know what we have to do to get that killer serve. Plus, she also has a habit of tying her shoes in an identical manner before every single match. It's odd that a dominating player would obsess about something so little, but it's pretty important to her. To each their own, right? In fact, she often blames huge match defeats on not sticking to this particular practice. Even though it seems absurd, we can't really argue with all those slams. Whatever gets the job done. And now we have Novak Djokovic. Like all other stars, Novak too has some crazy habits that sometimes even agitate his opponents. So if you've ever seen the man play, you'd know how he's often found bouncing the balls a ton of times before the match begins. One of the most defining characteristics of Djokovic is his urge for the ball to bounce, which can take up a lot of time sometimes before he serves, and is often seen as his cardinal sin. In the third round of the French Open in 2008, his opponent, Wayne Odesnik, was so confused and distracted by the ball bouncing that he even turned his back to the game to get his concentration back. Now, we don't know if Novak's been doing it to get comfier or to disengage his opponents, but it looks like the latter often happens. It's pretty common for Djokovic to begin his serve by bouncing the ball 8, 9, 10, or even 25 times on the ground before arching his back and smashing an often magnificent serve. Then he switches to his left hand and continues the pattern while leaning forward. So what's the point of bouncing the ball so much before serving if you don't need to? That's a question Lair, a sports psychologist, can answer. For six years, he has been collecting statistics on what elite players do to waste time and calm their anxieties between sets. He said that doing it was just a way for the players to stay
stay attentive. They do this to avoid drifting away and learn to stay occupied in their extra time. Moving on, Andre Agassi. This was a pretty weird one to say the least. Andre has been quite a magician on the court for as long as we know, and the man has finally come forward about what it is that fuels him. He opened up about his personal and professional life in his book Open. It was fascinating to hear about his 1999 French Open run and how he discovered the one pre-match hack that could help him really win. Agassi stated in his book that this one time at the start of the competition, he completely forgot underpants for his opening round match. And then, of course, on such short notice and with a lot more on his mind, the man went without underwear to play the match. But instead of getting distracted by all that must have been going on down there, Agassi wins the match, and the rest is history. After that, he refused to wear underpants for the remainder of the tournament, and even made it a habit. Here's the hilarious part of it all. He then went on to win the championship. It's not the first time athletes have adopted fashion trends after ending up with success in a certain look, but Agassi's was by far the most severe, yet hilarious one. Doesn't it feel weird? knowing that all the time you were watching clips of him destroying his opponents, chances are he was probably going commando. Next up is Dominika Sibolkova. This one's a bit bizarre, but if you happen to find yourself sniffing books anytime you're in a bookstore for that warm, earthy scent, you'd relate to what Sibolkova feels while she's on the court. And while she used to be seen doing this every time she'd be on the court, it has little to no correlation with the hopes of winning. Before serving, some pros like to take a certain amount of balls. We've also seen Djokovic and the likes stuffing their short pockets with as many balls as possible. Also, there are certain people who like receiving them from a specific area on the court. Dominika Sibolkova, though, takes things a step further by sniffing the balls as soon as they come in her hands. Back in 2012, when she went into the quarterfinals, fans and the media had a lot that they wanted to ask her. But out of all the questions, the one that stood out the most was why she was so adamant about smelling every ball that came her way. She even added that it's not like a superstition where she has to do it, but she just couldn't help herself from taking a sniff of the fresh balls. We don't blame you, girl. It does get quite tempting at times. She said that she had been doing it for so long now that it's kind of turned into a ritual, and she doesn't even think twice before doing it. Finally, Maria Sharapova. Both her tennis prowess and her grunting have made Maria Sharapova a household name. Another thing she does before every match and even between matches is intimidating her opponents. So whenever it used to be her turn to serve, she'd do things like pull hair out of her face, hop skip a few times, lock eyes with the person she'll be facing, and even bounce the ball once. A lot of people used to find it to be quite annoying, but not more than her grunting, right? The shouting was always super over the top. Sharapova also takes care not to step on the lines that separate her points. A tight, stammering walk around the court was created by Sharapova just so she could keep herself from stepping on the lines. Maria also talks to herself a lot, both before and between the matches, which is yet another one of her many quirks. Now, one can argue that the opponents would be agitated or even intimidated by this move as well well. But, well, only Maria can tell if she does it without planning to, or was it always a hack to confuse the others? That's a wrap for this video. What do you think about these weird things that tennis stars do, and which one of them was the most bizarre for you? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.